simple sentences. So, or otherwise known as independent clause. One thing we're going to talk a lot about in this class is the concept of the simple sentence. Now, don't get it wrong. Simple doesn't mean short every time. Simple doesn't mean that it's not a complex thought. Simple is just the structure. It means that there is essentially a subject and a verb. It could be a subject and two verbs, and it could be a plural subject, but essentially it's, it's one thing or group of things that is doing something. Here's an example of just some random simple sentences I pulled off the internet, and some I actually pulled out of my classes uh, from the previous semester. He came, he saw, he conquered. This is like the famous um, quote on uh, Julius Caesar, and... Aside from being strong repetition and rhetoric, it is a combination of three independent clauses. All of them are sentences. Um, they all have periods. He came, he saw, he conquered. Now, you could use something called parallelism and make it uh, he came, saw, and conquered. Uh, for this, I'd prefer the Oxford comma, and that would be less repetitive. Um, it'd be more concise. It wouldn't have the same rhetorical flair that it had before, but essentially we could take, these are still both uh, simple sentences. Previously we had three. Now we have a simple sentence with a list of verbs. It's still one subject. One time have we said he, and so in this case it's still a simple sentence. It's not a compound and it's not a complex, and it's not a compound complex. The next sentence is, I enjoy sitting by the fireplace and reading. So who's doing the action? Well, I am. And what am I doing? I'm enjoying sitting. This is my action here. Uh, I enjoy. So, in this scenario, we have both requisites. We have a subject and a verb. And then sitting becomes a gerund, but we'll get to that in this next sentence. Waiting to have my car's oil changed is boring. In this one, we actually have a verb, wait, that we've changed into a gerund. We've added an ing because when we have a verb that we make into a thing, so think like um, you could ski, that would be a verb. But skiing, like the action of skiing, is now something. Skiing is fun, or skiing is boring, or skiing is rewarding. So all of a sudden we take the event, and it's a thing. So it started off as a verb, but it got turned into a gerund. So waiting to have my car's oil changed is boring. This one's it's waiting. They get into it, and they talk about you know what we're doing. But is boring. So subject verbs. That's what we're looking for. And if we have several subject verbs in a sentence, then it changes the style. So let's go down here to an example from one of my students. With privacy being of little existence in the online world. Well, here's a clue. You cannot use prepositions as a subject. A preposition will never be a prepositional a subject will never be in a prepositional phrase. And so in this case, right, we can almost take this out and say it cannot be in this introductory clause. This is why it's important to have commas after introductory clauses. So it can't be there. Corporations have gathered information. This sounds like a sentence. Corporations are a thing. And what have they done? They have gathered. Okay, so we have a sentence there. Uh, information about consumers who are likely unaware of the fact. Now, who are likely unaware of the fact is in a positive describing consumers. And so, again, kind of like a preposition, these are just bits of the sentence that clarifies other components. They're not the actual thing doing the actual action. Um, they could be describing the thing that does the action, but it's not the actual thing. And so you have to be really careful about these long sort of interwoven uh, sentences 
that have all these little uh, components to them. Target can buy, here's another sentence, Target can buy data about your ethnicity. Well, I think I've got it. There's a lot of sentence left here. Your job history, magazines you read, if you've declared bankruptcy or got divorced, the year you bought or lost your house, there's a lot of use in here. But you are the object of this sentence. Target is the actor. What are they doing? They're buying data. What is it about? And then here's a list, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, all these things. Uh, coffee, paper, towels, cereals, applesauce, political leanings, reading habits. All right. So, but you can almost make this there and you pretty much have it. So, this is how you start to understand when you spy a simple sentence. The next video will be on compound sentences, and we're just going to add another layer to this. Have fun.